Good morning. Well, as yesterday we were dealing again with the 45th chapter of Isaiah, but today now I want to move on from there. It's always so tempting to get fur- go further and further into the Scriptures, and we need to get through in order that we can cover the whole of this particular book, and it's a fascinating book that is given to us. So today I'm going to start on uh, dealing with three chapters, 46, 47, and 48. I don't know whether what we're going to do with it. We'll probably come back to it again tomorrow. But um, we just want to deal with this because Isaiah now looks forward again. And he sees the people of Israel coming out of Babylon and coming back to their own city, rebuilding the temple, finally rebuilding the wall, and once again establishing themselves in the land of Israel. The trouble is that they brought with them a lot of ideas which they picked up in Babylon. They were wondering how to organize themselves and how to develop their society. And they were so contaminated by the ideas that they had. They'd been there, you see, for over 70 years. And somehow these ideas had got inside them. And so when Isaiah now turns to chapter 46, he is speaking to these people now who have been re-established. But in a sense, he's talking to us as well. Listen to what he says. Talking about the idols of Babylon that the people had left behind. He said, Bell bows down, Nebo stoops low. The idols are borne by beasts of burden. The images that are carried about are burdensome, a burden for the weary. In other words, he's starting to say, these idols, these things they worship, these methods that they had when they lived in Babylon, Now, this isn't the way you should do it. You should find out what God wants from you. But if you turn back there, you'll find that these idols are of no value at all. They actually carried around. They they don't know the past or the future. They, They are completely senseless. Turn away from the idols. We say, well, we we don't worship idols in that way in our present day. Oh, yes, we do in many ways. We look at the world around us as well. We've come into the church, a lot of us, from the world. And when we come into the church, we say, I bring all my skills from the world into the church. Now let's try to organize the church in the way that the world runs. Now I've known many, many people, for instance, come to a point of retirement. And they've had an important position in the world. They have been accepted and treated with respect in the world. They bring with them all the thoughts that they had and all the education they had in the world. And they come into the church. And yes, they accept Jesus as Savior and Lord. But because of their talent, they're very quickly elected to positions of authority in the church. Whether they be church wardens or secretaries or treasurers. But they bring their ideas with them into the body of Christ. And when problems arise for the body of Christ, they of course say quite simply, well... You know, I got all this experience. In the world, this is the way it should be done. This is the way which the world has proved to be successful. So let's do it this way. And because of their talent and because of their ability, people think, well, this person seems to know what they're talking about. Let's follow him or her. Let's find out what they want. Let's see how they see it. Let's find out how they would have worked it in the world and then try to copy different things. I look, for instance, a lot at the present day, at people being prepared for ordination. And I I look at the way they've been trained. And very often they've been trained, quite simply, with principles and ideas that have come from education or business. They've been trained according to principles being laid down by the world around us. But perhaps God doesn't want us to do it that way. Perhaps God wants to do it his way. Perhaps he's saying to us, come back to me again and find out what I want. I am the God who knows the future. I am the God who writes the future so that you will know that I knew about it even before it came to pass. These are the gods, these ways of doing it in the world. Well, they may be okay for the world, but that's not what I want of my church. That's not what I want for my body at the moment. Just a thought. And I may have mentioned this before, but there's no reason why I shouldn't say it again. When Samuel was governing Israel, 
the people went to him and they said, we want a king. And he said, why do you want a king? All this time you've been relying on God and his prophets. Why do you want a king? They said, no, we want to do it the world's way. We want to do it the world's way. And so Samuel gave them the king. And they did it the world's way. And sometimes they were successful and sometimes they failed. But they did it the world's way. Now, in a very real sense, the same thing is happening to us at the present time. You know, shall we do it God's way or shall we do it the world's way? And what would be the difficulty of doing the world's way? See, one of the problems with doing the world's way at the moment is that one of the main sort of driving philosophies behind the Western civilization is the idea of democracy. You know, we no longer depend on a, a, a king or a queen to actually govern us. We depend upon the demo democracy. In other words, the decision of the majority carriers. But perhaps the decision of the majority is not the right decision. It may not be God's decision. Something to think about. Something to pray about. Amen.